What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? It's your boy, Goblin, and today we're coming in with a banger, a classic acid story. Hope you guys enjoy. Drop a like if you do. Also, don't forget to check out the new merch linked at the very top of the description. Watch this little promo video. I think it's pretty cool. It shows off all the new stuff. Shout out to my merch guys for making that. Cool video there. Now I don't have to talk about it for a minute straight. Also, if you guys don't give a shit about the merch, which, I mean, some of you probably don't, we're going to be streaming on Twitch tonight. Come pull up, man. We're going to get stoned, play some video games. It's going to be fun. That is also linked in the description right below the merch. Thank you guys for the love and support. Drop a like if you enjoy. Subscribe if you haven't already. And without further ado, let's dive right into the video. So, this happened extremely recently. This happened literally last week, lads. How this event came to, came to be... Well, no, actually, let's take a step back. To give some background detail here... I haven't taken acid prior to this in about a year. I haven't tripped since summer of 2020, right? So I was a little rusty. It had been a while. And my girlfriend, we're going to call her Ashley for the sake of this story, she tells me that she has only tripped one time. I don't remember how this came up in conversation. It came up a little while ago, but she brought up to me that she'd only tripped one time. We're talking about it a little bit, and I'm curious. I'm like, oh, like, did you have a bad time? And she's like, yeah, it was terrible. I kept getting lost in my thoughts. We had no weed to smoke. I was sitting in my ex-boyfriend's room, and as soon as she mentioned that her first and her only trip was bad and it was with her ex, it was like I felt my inner psychedelic blood boiling. I was like, dude, no, you tripped in the wrong scenario, wrong people. I promise you're going to have a good trip. She was describing this trip to me, her first one. She's saying like, oh, yeah, his mom was home, and we tried to smoke, and she caught us and came in and yelled at us. I told her, listen, pro tip, I don't live with my mother, so we can actually take whatever drugs we choose, you know, at any given moment. That's the power of adulthood, right? That's the power of living on your own. She, you know, I, I had to show her that. So she's like, oh, okay, sounds good. I decide, you know, if we're, if we're taking some acid, we should make like a fun trip out of it. We should really go and do some shit. So we ended up spending a whole week up in Chicago last week, right? We only tripped one of the days, but we kind of just spent the rest of the week, like, chilling, you know, uh, exploring the city, having fun. I mean, I'd shown her around. She hadn't been, but, I mean, I know my way around Chicago, so I was showing her around. I was like, hey, you know, to take a gander around the city. You know, I, I took her to the aquarium, the zoo, all that shit, Field Museum. I took her to all the, all the good restaurants. We wanted to hit Little Village for the taco joints, but didn't get around to it. That's a next time thing. You know, put her on the bars, the pizza, all that shit, you know? But either way. The day comes around where we had set our whole schedule to just dose. That was the only thing we did on this particular day. I don't remember if it was last Tuesday or Wednesday. I don't know which day. I don't know. You can guesstimate, guys. So there's a 50-50 chance. It was either Tuesday or Wednesday. I don't know. I'm fucking baked right now. But either way, I had like a hiccup burp there. Do you guys hear that? That was fucked. Either way, I'm baked out of my mind right now. So this happened last uh, two Wednesday, you know, give or take. We wake up. And we immediately get out of bed, we go get ready, and right after we're done showering, we each dose. Now, she only started off with half of a tab. I ate a whole one, because I was like, bet, dude, I'm excited, I haven't tripped in a little while. And these weren't, like, super strong, crazy tabs. They were, at least what they were supposed to be was 110 UG. So a little on the lower side, actually, you know? A little on the lighter side for tabs. But I did that on purpose, because she'd only taken it once. So I figured, you know, something lighter would be good. And then if I want to trip harder, I could just eat more tabs. I ended up only dosing two and a half tabs, which I say only, but that's a decent amount. But for me, come on, dude, I'm the tab terminator. Come on, my guy. That's not enough. That's just a little appetizer for me normally. But I hadn't tripped in a while, you know, and I was trying to not absolutely melt my face and start drooling on the floor because I had to trip sit her, you know? So I wanted to stay somewhat as responsible as I could be while tripping balls, you know? So she takes her first tab. I eat my tab, or she, she takes half a tab, and I eat my first tab, right? We're chilling in the hotel for a little bit, and I, I wanted to kind of wait until we came up and she started tripping to, like, see how she felt, you know? Because our plan was, okay, we were going to take the acid, we were going to come up, and then we had a whole laundry list of shit we planned on doing. We were going to go out and get breakfast at this place called Third Coast, then we were going to go to the dispensary and grab a shitload of weed, and then we were going to the aquarium, and then after that, we were just going to walk around the lake, you know, and smoke some weed and have a good time. Maybe go to some bars later and figure shit out, you know? We had this whole plan set up and me I'm not one for planning I've I've said this many times in the past but she likes to have a plan so you know I had to compromise a little bit 
So we chill in the hotel for about 45 to an hour, and I'm not really tripping that hard. Like, I feel the come up for sure, but she didn't really feel shit. So she asked me if I want to take more. I was like, hey, this is your first, like, for real, for real trip, like, stepping out in public while you're tripping, but be my guest if you want to eat some more. So she ate another half of a tab, right? Now we're chilling. She's got a tab down the hatch, a full one now, and I'm like, okay, well, if she just upped the ante, I got to up the ante too. So I eat another tab. We're now chilling. I'm two tabs deep. She's a tab deep, and we wait another, like, 30 minutes. And at this point, she's definitely tripping, and I'm definitely tripping. So we're ready to rumble. Right before we leave, I call the Uber, and I decide to throw another half tab down the hatch. And I take the rest of the tabs that we had and put them in her purse, right? We had maybe... I brought quite a bit up to Chicago with me. I brought, like, 15 tabs with me. I, I don't know why I brought so much. I just figured maybe if I meet up with some friends who want them, but no one wanted them, so I just... I, I still have acid. But either way, back on topic. So we're chilling. You know, we'd just taken our doses. I did my final little redose there. And we go get in our Uber. Holy shit, was this Uber perfectly timed. Just just the finest of Uber rides, okay? Let me, let me describe this guy. Picture me and Ashley standing outside of our hotel waiting for the Uber, and we're just coming up, right? We got the giggles. We're laughing about random shit. You know, Ashley's looking all around at all the, all the trees and the, you know, the sky and all that shit, all the tall buildings around us. I'm sitting there just feeling happy because I've got that just... Just, oh, it's so hard to describe that come up feeling, especially after you haven't tripped in a while. But it's like I, it's like I just dapped up an old friend again. Like, I just feel that, like, warmth. I'm like, yo, I'm at home right now, dude. This is where I belong. Tripping balls, getting lost. This is what I like to do, you know? So the Uber pulls up. Oh, my God. It is a silver Hyundai Elantra, which I shit you not. We could hear the bass in the speakers bumping as he pulled up into the hotel little, like, driveway thing. He pulls up, and this guy has a black dragon decal that is all over his hood. It is huge. It's a big dragon, dude. It's, it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. So I look at this, and I'm just like, oh, my God, dude. This is about to be so fun. So Ashley and I, we get in the backseat of this Uber. We get in, and this guy immediately looks back, and he says to us, he's like, you guys like music? And I, I just answer for her. I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, dude. We fucking dig music, bro. Absolutely. At this point, I'm tripping. I don't care what this guy puts on. I'm in for a good time, right? Holy fucking shit. This was a... This guy loved his Bollywood music. Like, a lot. And his speakers, come to find out when I got in the car, were blown. Absolutely just just blasted. They got hiroshima Destroyed speakers. So this guy puts on some Bollywood and cranks the volume up. Because we said we like music after all, so makes sense. Cranks the fucking volume up, dude. We're sitting there, and I am trying so hard to hold in my laughter. I look over, and Ashley's holding it in so hard that her eyes are watering. It looks like she's crying under the mask. And I look over, and I start laughing harder. I'm dying at this point. This is one of the funniest things ever. I keep trying to look out the window, but it's like every time I collect myself, the bass would just hit, and they just hit that fucking note on that Bollywood track, bro. I guess finally the guy kind of caught on that we, we were kind of chuckling it up because he changed the music entirely to just like the, like whatever, like a different radio station or something. And this one was just playing like Olivia Rodrigo or some shit. But even then it was hilarious because this guy's speakers were so blown that some of the vocals would blow the speakers. Like terrible, terrible speaker quality. It was hilarious. But this guy's whipping, you know? So the breakfast joint we're Ubering to is like a 15 minute Uber. We get there and we go inside. It's a place called Third Coast Cafe. Listen, this is a place that my family showed me when I was younger. And I remembered it and I knew I had to take her there. Because it's a really low-key spot. It's in the lobby of an apartment building and there's almost no signs outside. Like, walking past the building, you would not know the restaurant is there. You have to go inside to then see the restaurant entrance and be like, Oh, okay, it's in this apartment building. It's also not a very big apartment building. It's, like, pretty small, you know? So we go in there and we're chilling. And the reason I love this place so much is because they serve these, these alcoholic breakfast martinis called cappuccinis. It is not an espresso martini. Let me make that clear. It is different. Espresso martinis are usually pretty shit. These things tasted like chocolate milk that was slightly spiked. Fantastic. But they had caffeine in them too. A perfect way to start our day. So we're sitting in this cafe. And I'm, I'm 
oh, I'm having a blast, dude. But let me tell you, I started peeking about halfway through our, our arrangement here. I remember we're, we're sitting at this little table where it's just got two chairs, right? So she's facing the wall behind me. I'm facing the wall behind her, right? And the decor in this place is just not made for people tripping. On the wall that she's facing, there's a picture of, like, who the fuck was it, dude? It, it was, like, Kurt Cobain, I think, and his eyes were just wide as hell. And she's, like, I remember we're sitting there chatting, and she's, like, I'm, I'm really getting uncomfortable with this picture. And I turn around, and I stare into the soul of Kurt Cobain, and I was shitting my pants. I couldn't blame her. I was, like, yo, like, that's kind of fucked. You know, if you want to switch seats, like, we can. I mean, that's fine. She's, like, no, no, I'll just, I'll just look away from Kurt, you know? So... <laughs> I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at the pictures on the wall, and I didn't realize how hard I was actually coming up and, and peeking at this point until I really focused on the wall. Because at the, you know, for the majority of our time in the restaurant, I was just chilling, I was enjoying my drinks, you know, kind of talking to Ashley, and just, just kind of enjoying the table. I wasn't really looking around too much, and I was looking out the window that was to my left. So... When I finally looked at the wall, which had this god-awful checker pattern with, like, 18 framed pictures on it, it felt like I was having a brain aneurysm. Everything was moving, meshing together. The wall was coming to life. It looked like the pictures were, like, popping off of the wall, like they were growing longer, if that even makes sense. I was having an incredible visual come up, or visual peak, pardon me. The visuals on these tabs were fantastic. So much better than I remember the visuals that I had in last summer's trip being. I will, like, this was one of my favorite trips I've ever had, honestly. I, it was such a clean trip. It was so good. The visuals were so fucking good. But I just remember I'm sitting there, and I'm staring at this wall, and I don't stop. And I remember Ashley kind of taps my hand. She's like, you good? And I'm like, yeah, just kind of tripping balls here. You know, like, I think that extra tab and a half I took is definitely slapping right now. So we're sitting there, and after a couple cappuccinis each, they come over and ask if we want any food. We're not very hungry. But we feel like we're obligated to order something to split so we don't look like alcoholics coming in to order nothing but cappuccinis at 10 a.m., you know? So we're looking at the menu, and they have this meatball appetizer, and it is just a single meatball, just a big old meatball. So we're like, yo, get the meat, dude. Get the schmeat. Get the meatball, dude, right? And it will split a singular meatball and drink like three, four cappuccinis each. That's our breakfast, okay? So that's exactly what we did. We order our individual meatball. We cut that bad boy in half and went to town. The sauce was great, dude. Even though we weren't hungry, it was nice, right? So we down our meatball, which, hey, a sizable fucking ball, I'll tell you what. A nice hunk of meat, if I will, right? So we down that. We chill out and drink a couple more cappuccinis, and I'm feeling fantastic. But if you guys have tripped before, you know that when you're sitting still in a room, you don't really realize how hard you're tripping because you kind of have time to process your surroundings, you know? It might get overwhelming when you first enter a new room and you start coming up or peeking or whatever, but once you sit down and kind of get accustomed to it, you're like, okay, here's where I am, here's what's around me, I'm good. When you step outside is when you truly realize how hard you're tripping. And after we paid our bill and got up and went outside to wait for our next Uber, I realized, wow, I'm looking up at all the tall buildings around me. I'm looking at all the cars and the trees and the people. And there is nothing about any of it that looks even remotely normal, dude, or even recognizable. The visuals were so strong. I was looking up, and the buildings looked like they were trees swaying in the wind. Every single one. It was so cool. The sky was so colorful, and there was literally no clouds. It was such a beautiful day. Like, not a single cloud in the sky. We picked the best day to trip. So I'm sitting there, and I'm looking up, and I'm just amazed. And I'm telling Ashley, I'm like, yo, like, look up. Look at the buildings. Like, don't they look cool? And she, I guess, didn't really get the same visual effect. She was like, no, they're, they're not really swaying that much for me. And I was like, oh, you haven't taken enough yet. Come on now. Come on. Hey, let's get a little more down the hatch. And she's like, you think? Me being the scumbag I am, I'm like, yeah, you should, you should take, like, another half when we get to the aquarium, right? So our next stop is the dispensary. Now, we went to the dispensary, and I bought a shitload of weed. I bought an ounce. I bought it by the eighth because I was tripping. <laughs> and I also went to a rec-only dispensary, which means that they wouldn't accept my medical card, and I still had to pay tax anyways. I'm not going to say the number because it's painful and traumatizing, but let's just say that is by far the most expensive ounce I've ever purchased, all right? We're going to leave it at that by a, such a long shot, okay? But we're just going to leave it there. So, mm, hydration break, bro. Hold on. Grab your water and appreciate that shit right now. Nice. Thanks, water. 
Mm. All right, back on topic here. So, I max out my dispo limit. I grabbed a fucking ounce of weed. I even grabbed wax. I grabbed like four or five grams of, of concentrate too. Some Jack the Ripper diamonds. I had everything. And in Ashley's purse, I had this little electronic nectar collector. And I also had some wraps. So our plan was like, okay, we're going to go to the aquarium. We're going to take some dabs outside, pre-game it. You can go redose, you know, if you want to. And then we can go hit the aquarium. It'll be all fine and dandy. So we get in and out of the dispensary relatively quickly. Catch our Uber over to Shed Aquarium, which, by the way, if you guys have never been to Chicago, one of the coolest aquariums in the fucking world, dude. Uh, like, that for sure in the country. Like, Shed Aquarium is sick, dude. They got sea turtles. They got sharks, bro. It's so fucking cool. They have beluga whales, dude. Dolphins. It's crazy. So I was sitting there thinking, like, yo, this is either going to be really overwhelming for her or, like, super fun. But we're going to find out because I know I can handle myself. So I'll be okay. We'll, we'll both be okay, right? So... We get over, we get out of our Uber, and we're kind of walking around the park outside of the aquarium, you know? And, and how the aquarium's set up in Chicago is it's there's, like, the Field Museum right next to it, and then there's just a huge open park where people just walk, and, and they have picnics, and they smoke, and they chill out. It's a perfect smoke spot, and no one bothers you when you're smoking, ever. Like, no one cares. People, The nice thing, like, my favorite thing about Chicago, it's my favorite city, dude, I'm sorry. But I just love that everyone minds their fucking business, dude. No one has shit to say. If you're smoking a blunt, they're just going to walk right past you. They don't care, right? So it's nice. We're sitting in the park, and I bust out the nectar collector, and Ashley's kind of looking around. She's like, oh, like, are you sure? Like, you should hold that a little lower, you know? She's she's kind of looking around like she's sketched out. And I'm like, hey, dude. We're good. Like, what, what? what's the worst that happens? Like, the, the park ranger comes up and tells me to put it away? Like, I don't know. What's he going to do, you know? Like, what? Like it, we're in Chicago, dude. They have way bigger things to worry about than two kids tripping balls in the park, you know? So, we're chilling out. We're taking our dabs. And I stick that nectar collector in. I stick it in for her, and she takes a dab. And after that, the visuals really come to life for her. She just needed that little boost. Ashley was feeling good. She's sitting at this table with me, and we're just looking at the view around us. And we're sitting maybe like, maybe like five, five minutes, not five minutes away, like, like five, ten feet away, pardon me, from this, this little taco stand that had a bathroom behind it. So she decides that she's going to redose. I say, hey, atta girl, hey, that's, that's my Ashley right there, you know? So she goes into the bathroom to redose for some reason, and she... <laughs> <laughs> this is actually so funny. So at the time, we didn't realize that she accidentally ate more acid. But she goes in the bathroom, and the baggie that I had my last, uh, like, I had a 10 strip sealed in this little mylar, right? Vac sealed. She ripped open the mylar with her teeth in the bathroom because she couldn't get it. And we realized when we got back to the hotel later and pulled the acid out that she accidentally ate, like, another three quarters of a tab. And then on top of that, she pulled off another tab, like a half tab, while in the bathroom and ate that too. So she was fucking lit, dude. I, I did not realize that she did that, and she didn't either. Like, she didn't compute that she actually accidentally ate a tab, but she did. So I'm sitting there, and I'm like, holy fuck, dude. But at the time, I thought she just went in and took another half, so I wasn't like that yet. So she comes back out, she shows me the bag, and she's like, oh, I couldn't, I was trying to rip it with my teeth, but I was having a hard time, and she shows me, and I'm like, oh, you know, I, I hope you didn't get any, and she's like, no, I, I think I'm good, I didn't get any, you know, I, I just took my half, so after that, we're ready to go into the aquarium. We put all the weed, all the wax, and the nectar collector into her purse, and we walk up to the aquarium. We go up to the door of the aquarium. They got the security. We already paid in advance, mind you, for our tickets, non-refundable. So we get in there. She puts her purse on the table that the security guy is at. He's tapping the outside of her purse with his little nightstick thing, and he's like, oh, you got any guns? You got any uh, drugs? You got any pepper spray or knives or anything that'll poke me? She says no to all of it. The guy looks at her and says, do you have any marijuana? She looks at him and says yes. Like, so eagerly. Like, she's been waiting all day to snitch. She said, yes, absolutely, I have cannabis in here. The guy looks at her and pauses. You could tell, like, I'm looking at the guy, and then I look at her, and I'm just sitting here, and I'm like, oh, my fucking God, bro. Like, like, did she really just do that? And the guy, he looks at her, and he's like, are you serious? And she's like, yeah, yup. And after, like, he opens the bag after she said that, right? And, of course, there's, we, we literally have an ounce packaged up by the eighth in this purse and five separate grams of wax. He didn't have to do any poking to find it, right? So he... 
he opens the bag and he looks and he just kind of smirks and he's like, you can't bring this in here. You know that, right? And she goes, but it's sealed. <laughs> And and he's like, he's like, yeah, well, just go put this in your car or something. The problem is, by the time we made it to the dispensary, it was or by the time we made it to the aquarium, pardon me, it was like pretty close to their closing time. We were the last check in slot, right? For the day. So we're sitting there and we're like, yo, if we leave, we're not going to make it back in time to get in because they only have like 30 minute check in windows where you can get there. And then after that, they won't let you in. They don't care, right? So I'm sitting there, and I'm like, bro, they close in like an hour and 45, and we just got kicked out with an ounce of weed, and we're not really in like reasonable walking distance of our hotel to get back in time, you know? So we're sitting there, and we're trying to figure out what to do. And we decide, you know what, fuck it. And I'm sitting there, and I ask her, I'm like, why did you tell the guy you had weed? And she goes, I thought he was joking. <laughs> I, told, I said to her, I said, why in the fuck would a homeboy joke? He's dead serious about everything else. He, he just throws that little kicker in. He's like, you got any weed? Yeah, like, like that, come on now, you know? So we, we laugh about it a little bit, and we decide, fuck it. Let's just go walk along the water, sit by the water, and smoke up. So that's exactly what we do. I think I neglected to mention this earlier, but I had pre-rolled a couple blunts for our day already while I was still back in the hotel that morning. So... We were walking by the water, and we busted out our blunts, sat right up by the water, and sparked up. There's joggers going all around us, and there's people on bikes, there's there's runners, there's, there's families and shit. No one gives a damn, dude. We're smoking up, having a blast, right? We're having a hoot and a holler. So we're, we smoked this first blunt, and I was feeling fantastic, watching the, the shine and the ripples of the water and all the boats moving around and how colorful they all were, and just the, just the sky and the sun reflecting off the water. It was so cool. And we could see Navy Pier from where we were sitting. It was honestly, it was such a dope view, right? So we're sitting there, and it, listen, it is beautiful, boys. I, we sat there for a good, like, two and a half hours. And after a while, we decided to get up and walk a little more with our next blunt. So we have another blunt rolled up, ready to rumble, and we walk a little further down the lake. And we end up walking so far that we get into, like, the like the storage yard for the planetarium. I don't even know how we made it back there because it was all, like, gated off. But I remember we were just standing there looking around at some point after walking for what was probably a good 40 minutes or so. And we're looking around and we're like, yo, there's no one here. And it looks like we shouldn't be here. Like, like, this shit is closed off. How did we get in? You know, so we're looking around. And finally, we make our way back out. And after we got lost in the, in the like, fucking shipping yard or whatever it was, we decide maybe we should just go back to the hotel. You know, we've smoked our second blunt. We should just go back to the hotel and regroup and figure out what we're going to do next. You know, because we didn't really know yet. Like, we had no fucking clue. We were sitting there trying to figure out what to do. But, I mean... It, when when our aquarium plans got smashed, you know, it kind of threw a wrench in things. So we ended up going back to the hotel, right? We Uber back to the hotel, and all the other Ubers were nowhere near as good as our first one. I remember I, I was having such a good time in that first Hyundai Elantra with the Dragon decal. I tipped that guy 100 bucks. I fucking loved him, dude. He was fantastic. Best driver ever. So we get in the Uber back to our hotel. We make it back, and we've got all this weed. And I remember we go up to our hotel room. And there's this little window that's by the, there's like a desk in the hotel room that's right up to the window. And the window had this little crack that opened. And we weren't like super high up. We were high enough to see the water and see over some buildings. But we were low enough where I could yell down at people and they would react. So I opened this window. And I was just fucking with people for like 30 minutes. Like people would be like walking up to their cars and be like, hey, that's my car, man. And you see them like looking around or like, I don't know what it was. Every single dog that walked down our street looked like Obama's dog. Maybe it's because we were in Streeterville and they all like the same kind of fucking golden doodle, whatever, yappy thing. But holy shit, every dog in Chicago looked like Obama's dog that day. And it threw me the fuck off. So I started yelling down. I was like, yo, you got to die your dog, man. You got you to gotta change that dog. Give him a haircut, you know? And there was this one lady who was walking a dog who got pissed, dude. She she was stopped her in dead in her tracks and started scouting the block out for who yelled that. Dude, she stopped and she started looking around. She looked up at one point, but the windows were reflective, so she couldn't see in anyways. And I'm dying, dude, because the first couple times I tried it, I didn't realize if they could hear me or not. But after I got that reaction, that confirmed. I was like, okay. 
these people can hear me. Let's have some fun. You know, I just had to really get my voice going. I had to really yell down there. So I was having a blast just fucking with people. And Ashley was fucking with people too. She was taking turns. We were having a hoop, man. But hey, listen. I think this is fair to be saved for a part two because this is already 25 minutes long and I'm just not done yet. I'm nowhere near done. So as much as I wanted to cram this in one video, I like truly don't think it's possible. So we're going to get a part two going. Drop a like if you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out the merch and my Twitch stream. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out, gamers.